having diagrams in your documentation, in your project, in your issues, whatever you're doing on your project on GitHub or anywhere else is really important. That's like a level two. So you're going from a list, which is a level one, to having diagrams, which I would call a level two. But did you know you could actually go to a level three? Yes, you could code your diagrams and GitHub naturally integrates with a tool called Mermaid. So a lot of people, if they wanted to do a sequence diagram that you see behind me, they might do it as a diagram kind of on um, Google Drive, which is great. It's great to have that diagram. However, if I was to you know make some drawings here now and do, I don't know, a sequence diagram or whatever it is, and then export it as a JPEG or PNG, kind of whatever your, your favorite is, we would save it in the project, but it'd be a binary, right? It'll be a JPEG, a PNG file. If someone wants to make a change to that, they need to recreate it from scratch every time, which is why diagrams are amazing, but also, well, that's not why they're amazing. Diagrams are amazing, but it's why they always get out of date really quickly because someone might not want to recreate it from scratch. And then you go, I know what you're thinking, then you go, well, just keep the original file. So the Google Doc, the Photoshop, the Illustrator, whatever it is, the SVG great idea in the project. So now you've got the binary, you've got the SVG, but then someone might not have the tool to do that. Whereas if we could just code it like we do with Markdown and everything else we do in our projects, then that would make it a lot easier for everybody. And you might be thinking, coding a diagram, that sounds really complicated, you know, and it's not, it's like Markdown. It's just a few kind of syntax you need to learn and you can reuse it. So I'm gonna quickly give you a quick demo of how that works and how to get GitHub to render the image for you without doing any exports or any crazy things like that. So let's move away from Google Drive. Google Drive is amazing, don't get me wrong, but let's move away from that for documentation of our images. And this is what you can see on, I've just put this in an issue and I've clicked on preview. So this looks probably like an image image to you and you might think that it was a PNG or a JPEG. However, this is actually written in some code. So you can see Alice goes to John with some text and all these sorts of things. And that's what generates this. I'm not here to go into the detail of the actual markdown items because there are loads of different types of diagrams that Mermaid supports. So what you need to do is go to Mermaid and, and draw your diagram. They've got a live editor so you can kind of test it and check it and all the rest. So this is their examples and they have other examples. So if you want your kind of class diagrams, state diagrams, ER diagrams, your Gantt diagrams, which I think are great for uh, milestones, user journeys as well, which I really like. And they're adding more all the time. They've even got Git diagrams, which is which is epic and so many others as well. Mind map has appeared since last time I checked. This is why I absolutely love it. You to come checking it out. And then this is the, the examples of how to do it. If you look at the Git one, it looks pretty, pretty straightforward. And it also, so the Gantt one, I think, looks really straightforward and generates a really nice um, diagram. So we can take any of these, and I just took the sequence diagram because I find that really useful for um, showing the, the the flow of, say, front end, back end, and third party APIs. So I think this is one that is used a lot. And I literally took this code, I copied and pasted it, and I put it into an issue. And just with the code tags, the three back ticks that you would normally do at the beginning and the end, but you add the library. So instead of being you know, JS for JavaScript or, or Markdown or a diff if you're doing a diff, I added mermaid and when you preview or you submit this issue it will get rendered into this and if you're doing it in an actual file within the project you will also see it rendered on the project however if someone wants to make a change if they say actually um, let's just we're using Alice and John here but you know that could be kind of our API and then a third API, third party API for example but uh, you could just change that. So if this, for example, was the request going back and forth, back and forth, and someone said, you know, request failed or something like that, they could change that and they could easily just say, you know, request failed or successful. And it automatically changes. You can see I haven't exported a JPEG or a PNG. It's just changing immediately. And I haven't had to install any image tools or anything like that. So this is how we can have great documentation, great diagrams, and also keep them up to date as well, which is super, super difficult. And let's make it easier for the project and for the people to contribute. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know if you're using Mermaid in your projects and what you what you think of it. Like I said, it's something we can use in the project, in the files as part of the code base. And we can also use it in uh, pull requests, descriptions, and issue descriptions as well. So let me know what you think. I look forward to geeking out with you every day in open source in India Hub community. Link in description below. I'll see you there.